Good afternoon, my beloved friends. I feel so moved and humbled by the memories that you are sharing of me. As I go around and make my way in my life in the spirit world, I meet so many souls over here and they complain to me that their relatives and friends and loved ones seldom think of them anymore. They have faded into the past and have disappeared. So it is quite moving for me to feel your love and be kept alive in your memories. For that energy does reach into my realm and I do feel them. I feel your thoughts and I feel the love that you send to me. And I often return it to you, whether you can feel it or not, but I do. So it is quite moving for me to be remembered in this way and to watch myself on your screens and those times when we used to teach and try to educate people to wake up. It does my soul so much good to know that you have woken up and you are moving forward and you are evolving and you are learning so much more than I ever knew when I walked the earth plane. For my understanding of the spirit world was keen, but not all the philosophy that has come through since I've entered the spirit world that you are now absorbing from the great teachers that are working through the mediums that you are associated with. So it is moving for me to know that I held your hands as you took your first steps on your spiritual paths. And I am so proud of how far you have come and what great lights you are unto the world. And I know you will share that light with other people in the days to come. When the curtains are drawn back and people will realize how they have been hoodwinked for centuries and centuries of time, and they will be seeking the true path to enlightenment and spirituality. And you, my friends, are holding the torches to show them the way. It said it's so wonderful to have that happen. And I'm grateful for all of you. And so happy you crossed into my path of life and that I can still be your way shower even today. We are ready for your questions now. Thank you, Carl, and happy birthday. Thank, Thank you, my friends, for helping us. Thank you, my friend. Our first question is from Ann B. Hello, Carl and friends. I wanted to know, how is Fenton doing? And what is he doing with his time? Also, how is Jim Semarok doing? Both are very much missed. Thank you. The two people that you are talking about often hang out together, as you would say. Uh, not all the time, obviously, but they do get together and enjoy each other's company. Fenton is going, um, 
his mind was always curious and he is spending much time in the libraries that are here uh, and much time uh, exploring the things that he was always curious about. For he was one who had questions and uh, was curious and that has not changed. The only thing that has changed is his access to answers for he is able to not only go into the halls of learning and find things uh, out that are recorded there, but he is also able to, uh, uh, I, the term I guess we would use is remote view and look into other dimensions and get answers from other people that he would never have had access to in the physical world. So he spends much of his time exploring uh, things that have always interested interest him in the past. Jim Simarok is doing similar work to mine, helping people to learn uh, more about mediumship and spirit communication, also assisting people on how to uh, learn how to communicate with their loved ones in the physical world. Uh, it is a um, arduous process not to work with the spirit people, the people living in our dimension, but to get the people in, in the physical world to be receptive enough to feel the presence. Some people have that natural ability and some people do not. And some people have been taught by their religions to fear it by all means, because they think it's an evil source. So it is trying to break through to the physical people that is more of a challenge than educating the, uh, the, uh, the people in the spirit world. Jim is very content being here. He, of course, misses his children greatly, but he stop, He is surrounds them constantly and is in their presence. And at times they are aware of his presence. Uh, he is also uh, working with uh, the man who's speaking with you on the healing sessions that he spoke about earlier. He is there as well as myself, and we are assisting uh, in the healings that are taking place. So he is doing well in the spirit world. They are both saying to say hello to all of you and are both sending you their love and well wishes. And again, enjoy what observing you at it's your gatherings, and they are pleased to be here with you. Do you understand? Thank you. The next question is from Karen and Joe. In February, there were several social media reports in the Johnston slash Cranston, Rhode Island area of very tall beings over seven feet tall. The reports are of a pair of figures seen in people's yards and near their homes. People who have dogs with them say the dogs see the figures or even alert the owners to their presence, but the dogs don't bark or approach. The beings are motionless and just look back at the people and dogs. The people get freaked out and run away back into their homes. The dogs leave with the, their people. Is this just bored humans playing pranks on neighbors or something else? Thank you. This, my friend, is something else. <laughs> These are entities that are here right now. They are observing. They are observing uh, the changes that are happening on the earth plane. You should be aware that Homo sapiens are not the only life forces in the universe. So there are others that are that have come and visit 
uh, and they are observing what is happening as you have described it. They have the power to uh, control humans so and also the dogs that you mentioned so that they will not come and attack them they do not mean harm to humankind nor to animal kind but they are observing and they are assisting in the energy shifts that are taking place on your planet as you may well know the vibration of the earth plane is uh rising and ascending and it happens not only through what is uh, it not only happens through humanity's change of thinking but also these other beings from other dimensions also are here to help modulate the and raise the frequency of the planet so they have the ability to not be threatened by the humans because if the humans were to charge them and try to cause them harm, they would cause the humans uh, to not be able to reach them. Uh, but humankind has been influenced through media and other uh places uh to be fearful of any kind of life that does not resemble them so therefore they tend to run away and the dogs who are not really afraid of the people they, they are seeing the entities they are seeing they are more attuned to their to their humans and since the humans are afraid they kind of pick up on that not so much fear but that emotion to flee and therefore they go with the humans uh, but they, it is not anything to fear and in fact they are causing benefits to the to mankind and the earth plane do you understand thank you that's very cool and some of them were picked up on ring camera okay our next question is from susan Yu, and she directs this to robert quinn robert are you still working with the Zanu, um, AKA Bigfoot on the other side. Is there anything you can relay to us that would surprise us about being on the other side or enlighten us in a good way from our human perspective? Thank you for connecting to us. Anything else you wish to relay would be a complete treasure. We love you, Susan. I first have to say to you that this is my first attempt to speak through a medium. So they are people here who are assisting me to speak and to come through. So please be patient because this is a very new experience for me. Yes, I've seen it in the opposite direction where I heard spirit speaking, but to actually influence a human body from the world of spirit, this is my first time. So it, it is ex an exciting experience for me. I am most pleased to have this opportunity to speak with you because it is uh, very, very special for me to touch back with my beloved friends. I need to tell you that the world of spirit is so very different than the physical world. 
you in the physical world walk around in your body and you feel very isolated. You feel alone at times. You feel the sense of loneliness. Mm -hmm. Even when you're with close friends, there's still a individualness that is present. When you come to the world of spirit, my friends, you are no longer an individual. Let me explain that. For yes, you are an individual spirit. But you are so much, it is so easy to communicate and be with other people, to feel the love of other people, because in effect, you are in an energetic body and the energy blends so easily with one another. You are working on developing your tele telepathic sense. And in the world of spirit, it's all tele telepathy, but not just mind. It's the energy that also merges. So you are never really alone. Yes, you can be if you wish, and you can pull yourself inwards and meditate and whatever, but you're also surrounded with so many other people and it's, it's all in one. It's, you, you're hearing other people, you're feeling their emotions, you're feeling their, their love. And it's so, it's a very, very different experience than living in the physical world. Yes, I am still interested in the and the big foot people as you sp speak of them. They were the ones that the question was asked about. They were actually big feet that are there. These entities have the capacity that I was talking about. They are linked telepathically with the world of spirit in a much deeper level. In a level, in other words, let's put it this way. Humanity is very cut off because religions have taught them that, that there is no spirit the communication, there is no telepathy. The big feet do not have that limitation. So therefore they are connected to to each other and to the spirit world, as I was describing as spirit being connected with the other spirits, they have that capacity and therefore they can bring forth that energy that we were talking about before and that they uh, can, uh, can express. They are tapped into the unlimitedness of the oneness they are here to assist because the eventual journey for humankind is to reunite with the oneness energy and to experience that while being in the spiritual body, excuse me, in the physical body and not having to wait until they go into the world of spirit to be in the spiritual body only to experience it. It is going to happen at some point in time and the big feet are here to assist in that. As you know, my friend, I was very interested in that, in those entities while I was living on the earth plane. And I joined them and I worked with them quite often in the world of spirit. I too have other interests that I pursue, but I do enjoy stepping back and talking with uh, my friends in the physical world when I can, uh, when I can make my presence known. And hopefully I will be able to have the opportunity once again to speak through a medium 
and to share my thoughts with 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 uh, with you with other physical people once again. For this is a very exciting experience for me. Uh, at this time, I feel I need to step back, but I want to express my deepest love for you and my joy in watching you and surrounding you with my love. Thank you so much. <laughs> You may proceed. The next question is from Susan S. Uh, they There's like three questions. They all relate to the Essene consciousness. So I will ask them together. Does the Essene consciousness have important relevance that is in alignment with your desire to make known the unknown? And is the Essene consciousness part of your excitement for gifts of the spirit church's evolution? And is there anything you would like to enlighten us with about the Essene consciousness? Thank you. Yeah. My friends. The Essenes were the schoolhouse where Jesus learned many things. It was a place where he could bounce ideas off of, it was like a sounding board where he could exchange ideas for the Essenes were, their philosophy was totally in line with the man you know as Jesus, Yahshua ben Joseph. He taught their philosophy. The Essenes were very much a group that wanted to keep to themselves because they understood that their concept of God being within and, be, and being connected to the oneness of God and the fact that God is both male and female, uh, uh, both androgynous as the word would be, did not sit well with the religions of the time and th would threaten them. And therefore they were not really enthusiastic about Jesus going and stepping on stage and proclaiming this truth to the world because he knew that the religions would strike out and, and uh, retaliate against him. However, Jesus felt it was his mission to bring it to a public platform. And because he did, the seeds of his teachings were planted. The religions did all they could to keep mowing down the seedlings, the, the, the small growth that would take place so that the truth could not grow and take hold and become popular. But the seedlings kept being growing up and sprouting throughout history so that there are seeds of this truth that have been coming up over and over again. And now in this age, in this time that you are living in, it is coming forth again. So yes, it is important, we feel, that you, the Essene consciousness as you are referring to it, uh, be, uh, be taught at this church and that it is the truth of the oneness of God, that God is within, that God is both male and female, that both male and female have value and quality and are important 
and when one is is placed on a pedestal and is and is important without the other imbalances occur in energy and in society and therefore it is to bring back the equality of not only the sexes but also the understanding that there are people between the two polarities of male and female and they all they in fact encumber more closely to god because they are both they are androgynous in expression so therefore it is important to start to understand all of this it is in the term the the ideas that you are studying now with divine crystalline energy and the oneness of god and the um the philosophies that are coming through the person who is asked the question uh can in can also is also being um what is the right word it's also being formulated to make it uh, uh, easier to understand because much of this information is very complex to to uh, understand. It comes on two levels. The mind needs to have some comprehension of what we are talking about, but there is an energetic component to it. So some of the teachings teach energetically, and that means that we are sending out frequencies and energy uh, and vibrations that are to interact directly with your soul so that your soul get, obtains that knowledge and therefore um and therefore it it will permeate throughout your consciousness so we are trying the information needs to come through your intellect through the mind and through the energetic sources through the soul in order to be to blossom forth and for you to live completely and this is at the goals that are being trying to be met at this time uh, through, through the collaboration that is being taken place and thus being shared with this group do you understand Thank you. And that is our last question. And again, we want to thank you so much, Carl. You are greatly loved and, and we're all so happy that our paths have crossed. So thank you and good night. My friends, you honor me so greatly with your presence. You honor me with your actions, for your dedication to learning, your pursuit of spirituality, your pursuit of spiritual knowledge. It is all an honor for me for the words are not coming at this point, but my heart is full of joy and my heart my cup runneth over, as they would say. I am so pleased and honored and happy. It's been quite a long time in your measurement of time that I am in the world of spirit. And yet you are still carrying the torches that I once lit. I cannot thank you enough. My blessings go forth to you. Know that I am always there, just a thought away. If ever you need me, just call me forth. State your question. Then quiet your mind, and I will do my best to implant my thoughts within your consciousness.
my deepest love and appreciation goes to you, as well as with all my gratitude. So be it. Oh, uh, one other thing before I let you go. Uh, I want to show you a picture of something that happened during our healing session. This is a picture of Carl at, at uh, the Oracle of Dodona in, in Greece. Uh, it was similar to the Oracle of Delphi. And the woman that's next to him was one of the precipitated cards that Carl received. What, I, what came through the other night was that I, we, I was, we were doing some healing and they took my hands and they extended it out just like Carl's hands are, okay, and the woman's hands. And it was to express the oneness of God, the expansiveness, the fact of living without any limitations, without all the, the dogmas that religions gave us, without the personal uh, uh, do, uh, pro things, limitations we have. Carl said on there at uh, one, one point in the video that he felt he wasn't worthy enough. That That is a very key phrase because religions made you think that you were born in sin and not worthy of being completely godlike so the concept of not having of being not worthy is something that needs to be eliminated from your soul and your consciousness and your mind you are god energy you and it is very expansive just as uh as carl is, is in that position and it made me wonder if jesus did not design his death to be crucified to be showing us the expansiveness he was in that position people walk around with that cross but they don't live in the expansiveness that people should have if you're in the oneness if you're in the divine energy you are you have access to to everything and this, this is where the new age is going, the new age of, of enlightenment. We will be living in that expansiveness. And this is just a symbol of opening yourself up to that. This all came in, in our, one of our healing sessions. Um, so, uh, so I did want to share, share that with you.